girl, John. Yeah. I'm ready to read the new play, Miss Wellington, whenever you are. Just a minute, dearie. Just a minute. Uh, the only thing is, I hope you don't mind me mentioning this, but you don't drink on stage, do you? I'm glad you asked, dearie. Once a play opens, I never touch a drop. Once I walk through the stage door, the bottle goes away. Until intermission. <laughs> um, have you been on the stage a long time, Miss Wilmington? All my life. I've done everything. Ever seen a peg on my heart? Why, yes. I did too! <laughs> Good show. My, it's a hot night, ain't it? Oh, to hell with the weather. Say, he's cute. <laughs> She's just kidding me, but she didn't mean it. Well, whenever you're ready, we'll go upstairs and read the play. I thought we'd do it in my room if that's okay. All right, dearie, I'm coming. The minute I see snakes, it's time to play down. Oh, but Miss Wellington, those are real. Uh, oh dear, Miss Wellington! She's out like a light. Better let her sleep at all. Do you think she'll be all right? Yes, but I wouldn't cast her in the religious play. Perhaps you just have to wait. The next time you meet an actress on the top of a bus, Penny, I think I'd send her the script instead of bringing her home to read it. And I wish you'd stop fooling around and take those love dreams around. You gotta get back in time to play for Matt and Colin Pop tonight. Colin Pop coming tonight? Well, tomorrow night was his night, but we had to change it on account of Alex. Ooh, big doings around here tomorrow night, huh? <laughs> Isn't it exciting? You think it was me who was getting engaged. I'm so nervous. I wonder what they'll be like, his mother and father. And what are you doing now? Hey, Penny, take a look at this new mask I made. Oh, now, don't tell me, Ed. Give me a minute. How's it, Troy? It's Mrs. Roosevelt. <laughs> you know, the nice thing about these bottles is that you can do almost anything with them. Last week was the Empire State Building. What is it this week? The Queen Mary. Hmm. Hasn't got the right cap on. Hey, Mr. Pitta. Yeah? Would you take a look outside for a minute? Why? What for? Well, for the past couple days, there's been a man standing outside the house. And you're crazy. No, I'm not. He stands outside the house, and then he follows me when I deliver candy. Really? Well, I'll take a look and see. I don't see what anybody would follow you for, then. Well, you know, Grandpa, there has been a lot of kidnapping going on. Yes, but not with Ed. <laughs> well? There's no one out there. You're sure? I'm positive. I just saw him walk away. You see? Oh, Ed, it could have been anybody just walking along the side of the street. Would you hurry and get back? Do you want to go down, Mr. Sycamore, and finish packing up those fireworks? Oh, yeah. We've got to take them up to Mount Vernon tomorrow. What's happening with your actress friend? Is she giving a performance? Oh, no, Alice. She's really drunk. Oh. Essie, you're gonna get Reba the kitchen all tomorrow, right? She'll need it. Of course. I'll get started on the love dreams right now, so we'll be way ahead. Thank you, darling. Mother, I think I'm going to get home around 3 tomorrow. That'll give me time to arrange the flowers and fix the furniture. By that time, will you please have everything down in the cellar? As in the typewriter, and the printing press, and the xylophone, and the snakes. And Miss Wellington. And Miss Wellington. The Kirby's are certainly going to get the wrong impression of this house, Alice. You'll do that, won't you, Mother? Yes, yeah. Thank you. I think I'm going to have Reba cook the dinner. 
What do you think, Grandpa? Oh, Alice, from what I've seen of the boy, I'm sure the Kirby's are very nice people, and if everything isn't so complicated tomorrow, I'm sure everything will be all right, too. Oh, Grandpa, I'm not trying to impress them or pretend we're anything that we aren't. I just want everything to go down smoothly. No reason why it should have not. We're all going to do everything we can to make it a nice party, dear. Thank you. You know, you're the most wonderful family in the world, and I'm the luckiest girl in the world. Grandpa, you don't know what it does to me. Just seeing him. Just seeing him, huh? Just seeing him for lunch and dinner until 4 o'clock in the morning and then 9 o'clock the next morning and then there he is. Just seeing him, huh? Oh, I don't care. I'm in love. <sighs> Nice, isn't it? Nice to see her so happy. Yes, I remember when I was engaged to Paul, how happy I was. And so, I still feel that way. I know. Nice the way Ed and Nessie get along, too. Oh, and Donald and Reba, even though they're not married. Do you think Mr. DePen will ever find anybody? Well, there's always Miss Bullington. <laughs> Here, I do wish she'd wake up. I'm going to read the play tonight. Mrs. Sycamore, look what I found. Remember? Yes, it's the, it's the painting I did of you as the discus bearer. Look, Grandpa. Ah, yes, I remember. <laughs> Say, have you gotten a little white in the hair, Mrs. Lupino? Is it very noticeable? Uh, it was a long time ago. <laughs> Too bad you never finished it, Mrs. Sycamore. Hmm. Just as well, too. I was going to have to strip next. Who would have thought that the day I came to live with the ice I was going to stay here for eight years? The milkman was here for five. Just ahead of you. Say, why do you leave anyhow? I forget. I did leave. He died. Oh, yeah. He's such a nice man, too. She never did figure out what his name was. What was the name we finally made up for him? Oh, Mark Vanderhoff, we gave him yours. Ah, uh, yes, I remember. It's such a nice thought, too, otherwise you would have never have gotten all those flowers. Mm, certainly was. And it didn't bother me any. I haven't bo been bothered with Manly more, and I haven't had a telephone call from that day to this. Uh, it's too bad you never finished it, Mrs. Sycamore. You know, I'd kind of like to have it. You know what, Mr. Dupena? I think I might just do some work on it. Tonight! Say, will you? Yes, I don't think she's going to wake up anytime soon. So, tell you what, you run down to the cellar and get the easel and uh, put on your costume. Now, quit my.
try our things again. Do they still look all right, Grandpa? Yes, indeed. You ought to forget your parents and ask for more. Why, thank you, Madam Colin Cobb. It happened again. There was a fellow following me every place I went. No, it wasn't. He followed me everywhere. Maybe he just wants a piece of candy. It's all right for you to laugh, Grandpa, but he's following me. And you do not know what following is. In Russia, everybody's followed. I get followed right out of Russia. You see, I'm sure it was just your imagination, Ed. Well, maybe. <laughs> oh, here we are. Where do you want this? Put it here, Mr. DePena. Then, for tonight's lesson, we will have the first movement of Cher Hamza. All right. Mr. DePena, has something happened to your figure over these last eight years? No, I don't think it's any different. <laughs> Bottles of beer and um some canned tuna. Do you like canned 
can know to Mr. Kirby. Oh, please don't bother. I have a little indigestion anyway. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, how about you, Mrs. Kirby? Do you enjoy Cantina? I'm very fond of it. You can have frankfurters if you'd rather. Either one will do. Well, make it frankfurters and some uh, cream corn and camel soup. Oh, and tell them to hurry that AMP is just around the corner and frankfurters don't take any time at all to boil. Oh, there he is. Uh, Mr. Sycamore, may I introduce you to Mr. and Mrs. Kirby? How do you do? I hope you'll forgive my appearance. Uh, this is always Mr. Sycamore's busiest time of year. Just before the 4th of July, he always is this like, oh! big... Oh, darling, I'm the most dull-witted person on earth. I thought it was tonight. Tony, I thought you were... Why, hello. Have you all had time to get acquainted? Uh, yes, indeed. How do you do, Alice? Oh, how do you do, Master Mrs. Kirby? Oh, I'm afraid I'm not very presentable. Oh, darling, you look lovely. Well, of course she does. Please, dear, don't let don't let this upset you. You just met another night sooner. That's all. Yes, but I was planning such a lovely party tomorrow night. Well, we'll come again tomorrow night. There, am I forgiven, darling? I suppose so. <laughs> we better see about getting you folks something to eat. Oh, that's all taken care of, Alice. Mother, what did you send out for? You see, Mr. Kirby has indigestion, oh, no. so he can only eat certain quite things. All right. I asked him what he wanted. Yes, Mother, but really, it's... Please, it's not as serious as all that, just because I have a little indigestion. Mr. Kirby, perhaps you do not have indigestion at all. Perhaps you have... Please, Madam Kolenkoff, don't be absurd. <laughs> you must admire Madame Kolenkoff, Mr. Kirby. She's, she's Russian, and Russians tend to look on the dark side. <laughs> I am a Russian, but a friend of mine, a Russian, died from stomach ulcer. Really? Uh, Madam Kolenkoff, please. Mr. Kirby has indigestion, and that's all. Mm-hmm. Let him wait. Um, uh, please, you have a seat, Mr. Kirby. Thank you. <clears throat> um, uh, tell me, Mr. Kirby, how are business conditions? Are we pretty well out of the depression? Uh, yes, I would say so. Uh, but you have to say, uh, things are going to keep on getting better. Broadly speaking, yes. Uh, business conditions are now operating at 64% of full pack of full capacity. That was against 82% in 1925. But of course, in 1929, everything just kind of... Oh, no, 
know, I, I, I just play with it. <laughs> I see. Father, maybe it'd be better if you had a hobby like that instead of raising orchids. Yes, I wouldn't be surprised. <gasps> Mr. Kirby, please tell us all about your orchids. Did you know that they can take up to six years just to blossom? Think of that. Why, some of them take longer than that. I have one that I've waited 10 years for. Believe it or not, I've been waiting for an orchid. Yes, but of course, that time they require the most scrupulous care. Right. I remember a ball. Donald! Ball. Did you get everything, Donald? Yes, ma'am. Only they didn't have break burgers, so I got pickled pig's feet instead. <laughs> That's fine. Just put everything in the kitchen, Donald. Mr. Kirby, please tell them all about your orchids. I know they just love to hear it. And if you'll excuse me, please. Um, kind of an expensive hobby, isn't it, Mr. Kirby? Raising orchids? Uh, yes, but I believe that if a hobby gives one sufficient pleasure, it's never expensive. Oh, that's very true. Yeah, uh, I need something to believe the daily nerve strain. After a week in Wall Street, I'd go crazy if I didn't have something like that. A lot of men I know have yachts, just for that very reason. <laughs> but why don't they get on Wall Street? What's that? Oh, I was just joking. I think it's necessary for everyone to have a hobby. Of course, it's more to me than a hobby, but my greatest soul is thing. Spiritualism. Spiritualism? Yeah. Everybody knows that's fake, Mrs. Kirby. To me, this is more. Spiritualism is. I'd rather not discuss it, Mrs. Moore. Now remember, Penny, you have one or two hobbies of your own. Yes, but not the other ones. <laughs> now, I don't think it matters what the hobby is, Penny, as long as you have one. Who would be ideal? And the hobby is going to improve the mind as well as the body. Showing as a wrestler. You could be a tomato wrestler who you are built for it. Why? Oh, oh, oh. Mr. Kirby! Father, are you alright? Mr. Kirby, are you hurt? I am. Uh, where, where are my glasses? Here, they are. Oh, I'm afraid they're a little broken. probably sit down. What were you thinking? Why didn't somebody stop her? I think it's time we better get going. Mother! Oh no, please don't go, Mrs. Kirby. Please, please don't go. Or I sent out for some plain salad and scrambled eggs. Oh, please don't go, please. I'm very, very, very sorry if I hurt you, Mr. Kirby. Please? No, we're staying. No, Madam Holman. 
not my phone call. But I'm sure Mr. and Mrs. Kirby would love this game. It's perfectly harmless. I'm not very good at games, Mrs. Sycamore. Oh, but any fool could play this game. All you do is write your name on a piece of paper. Mother, what is this game? Oh, it's called Forget Me Not. I used to play it at school. <laughs> Here. Write your name on this piece of paper. And Mrs. Kirby, you do the same on this one. Now, I'm going to call out five words, just anything at all, and as I say each word, you're going to write down the first thing that comes into mind. Is that clear? So, for instance, if I said grass, you might put down your cream. Or if I said chair, you might put table. It shows the different reactions people have to different things. Come on, Father, be a sport. Very well. I shall be happy to play it. In reality, he does want to play. Well, now then, are we ready? Ready! Remember, you must play fair. Put down the first thing that comes into your mind. I understand. The first word is potatoes. Potatoes. Everybody ready? Bathroom. Bathroom. Got it? Go ahead. All ready? Lux. Mother! Nonsense, Alex. That word's all right. No, it's not all right. I think it's a perfectly fair word. You see, now you must interrupt the game. May I have the last word again, please? Lux, Mr. Curry. I've got it. <laughs> The next word is honeymoon. <laughs> now, Essie, honeymoon. Everybody ready? Sex. Mother? Sex. Everybody got sex? <laughs> now, give me all your papers. Thank you, Grandpa. Thank you, Mr. Kirby. What happens now? Oh, now this is the best part. Now I read your reactions. Oh, I see. It's really quite an interesting game. I knew you'd like it. I'll read your paper first, Mr. Kirby. Listen, everybody. This is Mr. Kirby. Potatoes. Steak. That's very good. You see how they go together? Steak and potatoes. I just happened to think of it. It's very good, Mr. Kirby. Bathroom, toothpaste. <laughs> Lust, unlawful. Isn't that nice? <laughs> Honeymoon, trip. Yes. Sex, veil. <laughs> of course you are, Mr. Kirby. That's a really wonderful paper. Thank you. It's more than just a game, you know. It's kind of an experiment in psychology, isn't it? Yes, it shows how your mind really works. Now we'll see how Mrs. Kirby's mind really works. <laughs> Listen, everybody. This is Mrs. Kirby. Potatoes. Starch. I know what you mean, Mrs. Kirby. Oh, dear. Bathroom. Mr. Kirby. What's that? Bathroom. Mr. Kirby. I don't quite follow that, my dear. Oh, I just thought of you in relation with it. After all, you are in a good deal of time, shaving and bathing and... Indeed. I hadn't realized I was being selfish in the matter. Go on, Mrs. Sycamore. No, I think we ought to stop. Yes. Yeah. No, please go on, Mrs. Sycamore. Uh, where was I? Ah, lust. Human. Human? Really, Miriam? What I meant, Anthony, is that lust is, after all, a human emotion. Well, I don't agree. Lust is not a human emotion. It is depraved. Very well, Anthony. I'm wrong. Really, it's the most pointless game. Supposedly played 20 questions and 
dead? No, I like this picture. Please go on, Mrs. Moore. What was the next word? Honeymoon. Oh, yes, what was Mrs. Kirby's answer? Uh, honeymoon. Dull. Don't do it, Ed. Ed, please. 
Yeah, all right, then. Bring him down. You know, you're the most stubborn daughter in all 48 states. That must be the cab. But in a way, no. Now, I'm not the kind of person who tries to run people's lives, Mr. Kirby, but I don't think these two, two young people have as much sense as, well, you and I have. Grandpa, please. Oh, I'm just talking to Mr. Kirby. A cat can look at a king, can't he? I better call that cat. Do you want me to do that for you, Al? No, thank you, Mother. I've got it. Well, you, you've got a while yet before the train leaves, Alice. Hello. Could you please send a cab to 644 Claremont Drive? Yes, that's correct. Thank you. Oh, Alice. Oh, Father. Are you ready, Tony? Uh, Mr. Kirby, I suppose after last night you think this family is kind of crazy. No, I wouldn't say that. Although, I'm not accustomed to going out to dinner and spending the night in jail. <laughs> Mr. Kirby, you've got to remember, you came on the wrong night. Now tonight, I'll bet you nothing will happen at all. Maybe. Mr. Vanderpoff, it was not merely last night that convinced Mrs. Kirby and myself that this engagement would be unwise. Father, I can handle my own affairs. Alice, for the last time, will you marry me? No, Tony. I hear what your father has to say, and he's right. No, he's not. Alice! You're not marrying this boy because we're the kind of people we are. Grandpa. So what if the families want to get along? Well, maybe they wouldn't. But who says they're right and we're wrong? That's not what I'm saying. I just well, think... what I'm saying is that Tony's too nice a boy to wake up 20 years from now with nothing in his life but stocks and bonds. How's that? That's right. I'm happy and mixed up. The way you are. I beg your pardon, Mr. Grandpa. I'm a very happy man. Are you? Certainly I am. I don't think so. What do you think you get your indigestion from, huh? Happiness? No, sir. You get it because you spend most of your time in doing things you don't want to do. Well, I don't do anything I don't want to do. Yes, you do. You said last night that at the end of the week in Washington, you're, you're crazy. Why do you keep on doing it, Mr. Kirby? Why do I keep on doing it? Well, that's my business. A man can't give up his business. Why not? You've got all the money you need. You can't take it with you. That's a very easy thing to say, Mr. Vanderhoff, but I've spent my entire life building up my business. And what's it got you? Same mail every morning, same kind of meetings, same deals, same dinners at night, same indigestion? What does the fun come in? You must have wanted something more when you started out, Mr. Kirby. We haven't got too much time, you know. Any of us. What do you expect me to do? Is the way you do? Do nothing? I do a lot of things. Time enough for anything. Read, talk. Visit the zoo now and then, practice my darts. Even have time to notice when spring comes around. Don't have to talk to anybody I don't want to. Don't have to do six hours of things I don't want to and get one hour of thing I want in. And I haven't taken bicarbonate of soda in 35 years. What's the matter with that? What's the matter with that? Suppose we all did it. A fine role we have, everyone going to zoos. Don't be ridiculous, Mr. Vanderhoff. Who did the work? There's always people to do the work, Mr. Kirby. You can't stop them. Eventually, when they fly the ocean, there's always people to go down to Wall Street, too, because they like it. But from what I've seen of you, Mr. Kirby, I don't think you're one of them. I think you're missing something. I'm not aware of missing anything. I wasn't either, until I quit. I used to wake up at 9 o'clock sharp and go down to the office no matter how I felt. I lay awake at night for fear I wouldn't get that contract. What I'm trying to say, Mr. Kirby, is that I've had 35 years that nobody can take away from me, no matter what they do to the world, see? Yes, I do see. And it's, it's a very dangerous philosophy, Mr. Vanderhoff. It's, it's an American. And it's exactly why I'm opposed to this marriage. I don't want Tony to come under his influence. Father, what's so wrong with it? Wrong with it? Why, it's downright communism, that's what it is. You didn't always think so. What are you talking about? I'll tell you what I'm talking about. You didn't always think so, because there was a time when you wanted to be a trapeze artist. Don't be an idiot, Tony. Oh, yes you did. I saw those letters you wrote to Grandfather. Do you remember those? No! How dare you read those letters? Did you wear tights, Mr. Kirby? <laughs> no, don't be, don't be upset. 
Mr. Meadow was 14 years old at the time. Yes, but at 16, you wanted to be a saxophone player. Tony! And at 21, you ran away from home because grandfather wanted you to go into the business. It's all down there in black and white, and you didn't always think so. Well, well, well. <laughs> I may have had silly notions in my youth, but thank God my father knocked them out of me. I went into the business and forgot all about them. Not altogether, Father. There's still a saxophone in the back of your clothes closet, Tony. There is? <laughs> we'll talk about this later. No, I want to talk about it now. I think Mr. Vanderhoff is right. Dead right. I hate that office. I've always hated it. And I'm not going on with it. I'm clearing out. Clearing out? What do you mean? I mean, I'm not going into the business just because I'm your son. I'm getting out while there's still time. What are you going to do? I don't know. Maybe I'll be a bricklayer. But at least I'll be doing something I want to do. Well, that must be the cab. Ed? Ask him to wait a minute, Ed. Grandpa! Alex, do you mind? Mr. Kirby, Tony's just going through what you and I did when we were his age. And if you listen closely enough, you can hear him say the exact same things you said to your father 25 years ago. And you know what? We were right. How many of us are willing to settle when we're young for what we eventually get? All those plans we made. What happened to them? It's only a handful of the lucky ones who can say they even came close. So, before they clean up that car, Mr. Kirby, I said you need to figure out that saxophone. How about it, Father? Are we staying for dinner? Uh, I beg your pardon, but before I make the blintzes, how many of you will there be to dinner? Ah, you're right. Mr. Anthony Kirby and Mr. Kirby Jr., the Grand Duchess Olga Katrina. How's that? How do you do? Before I make the blintzes, how many of you will there be to dinner? Oh, I make quite a stack of them. Can't ever tell. Good. The Tsar always told me, Olga, do not be stingy with the blintzes. Who did you say that was again, Sir Ben Ralph? Oh, the Grand Duchess Olga Katrina. She's going to be dinner. Oh, and speaking of dinner, Mr. Kirby, why don't you and Tony both stay? Oh, please do, Mr. Kirby. We still have everything that we were going to make tonight. Please, Father. I'll uh, always stay to dinner. Well, Tony, if you'd like to, I would. And, Mr. Vanderhoff, do you think Alice could send away that cat? How about it, Alice? Going to be a nice crowd. Don't you think you ought to stay for dinner? I'm saying, Alice. I mean, the family's off to get to know each other, don't you think? Mr. Kirby? Tony, oh, Tony! Darling! Grandpa, you're wonderful. Oh, I've been telling you that for years. <laughs> Grandpa, there was a letter for you in the icebox. Well, let me see. Oh, the government again. Well, well, well. What is it, Grandpa? The United States government apologizes. I don't own a nickel. It seems I died eight years ago. <laughs> How's that, Grandpa? They're very sorry, and I'm going to get a refund. Remember China the Milkman? Yes. Well, they're very sorry, and I may get you a refund for it. Grandpa, you're an old crook. Sure. How did you say you escaped the income tax again, Mr. Vanderhoff? How do you do? How do you do? Fine, fine. Uh, it's just a... Uh... What has happened? He's relaxing. Play something, Ed. All right. Nonsense, I haven't any indigestion. So, Alice, where are we going to honeymoon? I was thinking. Oh, honeymoon. shut your face, Mr. Kirby. Essie, stop dancing and come to the table. Quiet, everybody, quiet. Well, sir, here we are again, certainly much obliged. Alice and Tony are going to marry, and they certainly seem very happy. 
Of course, the fireworks blew up, but that's Mr. Defense's fault, not yours. Above all, we want to keep our health and be happy. And as far as anything else is concerned, leave it to you. Thank you. How about? I tell you that. Ha, 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 ha.